Hey guys, this is uh, ICO Media here. This is going to be a head to head, no pun intended, uh, shootout between the PV Valve King 1 and the PV Valve King 2. Um, I was having a hard time deciding which one to get at some point, and uh, a video like this would have been pretty sweet to, to see. So uh, now I have the uh, temporary luxury of having both heads here. Um, I figured I'd take some time to make this shootout video. So on top, we have the PV Valve King 2, 100 watt head. On the bottom, we have uh, the first version, the Valve King 100. Um, so far, you can probably tell in the picture right now that the Valve King 2 is, is a pretty meaty looking amp. Uh, it's definitely uh, a little bit bigger, um, but I think weight-wise, it's only a pound heavier. So there's just a lot of empty space in there, I guess. But just to give you guys a quick demo here. This is a little bit, about 26 and a quarter. And this is just under 26. Height-wise, it's about nine inches high for the VK2. And it's about eight and a half for the uh, VK1. Depth, it's about 11 and a quarter for VK2, and pretty much spot on 11 for the VK1. So I don't know if those uh, little measurements will uh, make or break your decision to uh, buy an amp, but it might be important for some of you guys. Um, we have here is really interesting. The VK2 is, pretty much an exact opposite layout for the controls than the VK1. Now, I don't know why they would do that, especially for the VK1 users who have gotten used to a certain interface with the, uh, with the head, basically has to relearn it and uh, go complete opposite. So you'll see here, VK1, you have input one, input two. You have your clean channels, your volume, your bright and your channel select your uh, bass, middle, and treble. So let's take that chunk right now. Let's mirror that complete, completely on this side. You have your input one, two, volume for your clean, channel select bright, your bass, mid, treble. Lead, pretty much exactly the same. You have your gain, your boost volume, uh, your, your, uh, your selection for, for more gain or not. Yeah, your volume, your bass, your middle, your treble, exactly the same, gain. Your two buttons there, volume, bass, middle, treble. And your master, this is where it changes a little bit. You have your master reverb. Your effects loop is in the front of this VK1, whereas the effects loop is on the back of the VK2. Now, I've only started to get into uh, using my effects loop. Um, and honestly, it's kind of a pain to go find it in the back. So this is probably a little bit more convenient. But again, I guess it doesn't, you know, it's your, each his own, I guess. All right, so if your master reverb, sorry, here, you have your resonance and presence, resonance and presence, all right, and then that's sort of where it ends for VK1. VK2, you have your vary class knob in the front, whereas the vary class knob is in the back of the VK1. Now, I don't know how important that is to you or how much you'll use it. Um, for me personally, I just leave it on AB. I'm still getting, to use, getting um, used to these heads. Um, these are my first, uh, really my first ownership of a tube amp, so there's still a good amount of, uh, of a learning curve for me. But yes, in the back of VK1 is going to be uh, the very class knob, which will switch you from class A to AB amps. All right, you have your uh, light indicator here telling you if your thing is on or not. The one added bonus of this is great, is that there is tube monitoring for this. So you can see when you turn the amp on, and I'll show you guys later, um, these are all red, that means they're on standby. They're all green, that means they're all on. You can choose your, uh, your wattage that you'll be uh, working with. It's either gonna be 100, uh, 25, or five. And then depending on which one you switch it to, certain tubes will shut off. And you can see that those tubes will turn red. And I think the best thing is that when your tubes go weak or something is going wrong with your amp, It'll tell you right away um, which tube uh, is, is damaged, which is great. Again, first time with the tube amp. 
That doesn't really mean that much to me yet. Uh, it's brand spanking new. I don't know when I'll be getting any type of tube issues uh, in the near future, but hopefully, you know, this thing will work when it, uh, when it is time for that. What else do we have here? Then you have your uh, standby, your power, standby and power. So everything VK1 goes this way, I guess, and VK2 goes this way. And I don't know if that was really a necessary change, but um, I guess they had to show some type of improvement or difference. Um, as far as the look goes, I guess it depends how old you are. <laughs> um, it's mo more guys my age, it seems, like, like this look because it has a little bit more of a vintage vibe to it. Um, it definitely has the, the chicken head knobs, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, very reminiscent of, the, of older amps, where here PV has its metal grill in the front. I kind of like being able to see through the amp. Um, not that, you know, I'm not a, a tech hound, so to me personally, I mean, it doesn't really mean that much uh, on a technical level, but uh, aesthetically, I think it looks uh, a little bit cooler. But, you know, that's just, that's just my thing. Here's the, uh, the back of both amps. Definitely a lot more going on in the VK2 here, as you can see. I guess it's, um, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, VK1. Foot switch. This is your uh, your texture knob, I guess, or your vary class. Uh, choosing from A to A B right here. You can select your ohms. So you have 16, 8, and 4. Your uh, speaker jacks here to go out, and the power cord input. Now, what makes uh, VK2 really awesome, and, and really the deciding factor of why I I, I bought it, um, and I think the reason why I'm going to keep it is you have uh, really uh, nice options for, for outputs. Okay, so let's start from the left first. Again, you have your, uh, <coughs> your power cord input. Um, this amp has uh, these hooks to wrap around. This one doesn't. That makes the difference too. Uh, 100 watt, 5 watt, 25 watt power output selection. This does not have that. Your uh, speaker outputs, you have your impedance. Same thing here. Right, 16, 8, or 4. And this is where it gets really interesting. You have uh, an XLR output, which you can go directly into, uh, I guess, your front of house mixer and um, go direct into PA speakers if you, uh, if you wanted to. Um, or you can also use it as an output to record. Um, you have a speaker enable and defeat. Um, I've read uh, somewhere that. Uh, and if you turn on your tube amp, you always want to have it attached to a, a speaker um, or risk uh, damaging something. Um, if you're recording, let's say, uh, you obviously you don't need to have your speakers. If you're recording direct, you can shut off uh, the connection to your speaker. And I guess a dummy load will, will recycle itself in here so your amp will be safe. Um, but you know, don't freak out if you're playing live and you don't hear anything coming out of your cabinet. Chances are this is you know got switched off by accident. You have a ground lift for direct recording or direct input, which is pretty sweet. Uh, here your your effects loop. Okay, in the VK1 the effects loop is in the front. Here it's in the in the uh, the back. Um, you have an added foot switch here as well. This foot switch jack will control your reverb and your effects loop, and the other foot switch jack which is what I use, will uh, switch your channels and give you uh, a, a boost uh, for solos. Right, so um, the, each, each of these things will take the TRS to uh, two button foot switch. Um, so I guess it depends how many foot switches you want in addition to your pedal board if you have one. And uh, the other cool thing here is that you have a USB output for uh, direct recording into your DAW, which I think is, is awesome. All right, so you have basically three different options here for some type of output, front of house, or into your mixer, into your DAW, or into your uh, interface, and then you have your dedicated USB for recording. So functional-wise, uh, VK2 definitely has more features for that if you record a lot at home, um, or if you play in a, in a big enough band or a big enough venue uh, where you would be cool going into the front of house and you have a good uh, front of house guy uh, mixing everything, this output is, uh, is pretty awesome.